Um, thanks for joining us. Your saltwater guide, Captain Dave Hansen here with a then Marley. There he is. And Marley checking us out. He loves the show. He gets so excited when he hears my voice coming right out. There he is. Gang, thanks for joining us today. We have a really, really good one for you today. Probably one of the most controversial subjects we talk about on the show. And we do this every couple of months just to keep everybody honest. And I got a text message from one of our members this morning asking if we could talk about this again because he had missed it before. So we're going to talk about it today, just like the title says. When you go fishing, how much should you tip? And we're going to talk about that today. We got all kinds of cool stuff to talk about. My goodness, I don't know if you noticed, if you saw what's going on, but the weather is straightened out. And it is, it means unbelievable, unbelievable fishing. The fishing right now is absolutely insane. Unbelievable fishing. Just incredible there's a uh, bluefin are biting white sea bass are biting calico bass are biting rockfish are biting and it looks i was looking at windy.com a few seconds ago right before i went live and it looks like we're in store for another really really nice weekend so you want to make sure you check out our game plans on our website for where all this fish is biting at where all this stuff is happening at it's imperative to know exactly where to go and exactly what to do. It is super, super important. It is super important. So that's why you want to make sure you watch your the game plans tomorrow. We'll post those things. We'll get them out there around 3.30 tomorrow afternoon, 4 o'clock, and it'll have all the hot, hot information on what's happening, where it's happening at. But some of the sport boats, the day and a half boats and stuff reported in this morning, they already have limits. A couple of the boats had limits before two o'clock in the morning. That's pretty phenomenal when you leave the dock at six and you got limits before two o'clock in the morning on bluefin. That's an incredible, incredible day. Then the halibut fishing over at the offshore islands is just historic how good the halibut fishing is and then they sprinkle in some sea bass and some yellowtail and whoo we're in store for a phenomenal season and then down here in Cabo San Lucas it's like uh somebody just flipped the switch down here too everything's biting and which is incredible for April the striped marlin fishing is absolutely insane 12 15 miles out of the harbor it's it's insane. And then there's Dorado and yellowfin tuna sprinkled in and the inshore fishing for the pompano and and the um, rooster fish and cabrilla and stuff like that. Everything is biting, gang. And then up the Sea of Cortez, the yellowtail fishing's incredible in Loretto. I just think that we are in store for one heck of a season. And like I told everybody before, when we were all crying and whining and whimpering about the weather and the rain and the cold, and I kept trying to explain to everybody, this is going to be incredible for fishing because it brings so many nutrients back into the water that we're missing for so long from that drought. Yeah, Marley, we're talking about you, buddy. He's checking you all out up there. He's he, very interested. Those of you that haven't seen the show before, that's our monkey right there. His name's Marley. He's the smallest monkey in the world. He stands a total of eight inches tall. His head is the size of your thumb. He's a monkey. When he comes out of that box up there, you'll see he has a two and a half foot long tail. He's the coolest little monkey in the whole wide world. But man, I'll tell you what, don't buy a monkey. It was probably one of the dumbest things I've ever done in my life. I'm at a point now where my wife and I are re basically retired. We can go do whatever we want, whenever we want, as much as we want. And then I went and screwed that all up and got a monkey. This little guy takes up more time than any of our children have ever taken up. And we're a hands-on parent. We have great relationships with our kids. But Marley takes up so much time and energy. So if you're thinking, hey, I want a monkey like Captain Dave, don't get a monkey. That's not, don't get a monkey. Don't get a monkey. But we love them. We're not going to get rid of them, right, Mark? 
he's our little buddy. He is our pal, but he is a ton of work. For an eight inch tall animal, I've never experienced anything that takes that much time and causes that much drama in your life. He is at full time all the time because the biggest problem we have with these little monkeys is they die of loneliness. They, they need to be around people. And as you watch the show every day, you start to see Marley gets very, very active when he hears, hears me talking because that means someone's in his room. I'm in the room all day, but most of the time I'm answering comments on social media. So Marley gets very excited when we do the show. So thank you all for watching the show. I appreciate all of you. It's amazing the audience that we've gained over the last five years. I am just shocked, totally shocked. And we will hit 100 million views by Sunday on that video. That's the Navy SEALs helicopter down in Newport Beach. That thing's going to hit 100 million views. If you're not a rock and roll artist or a country artist, or you're just a regular old guy making videos, there is no nobody that has that many views. So that's a big deal. And that's all because of all of you. It has nothing to do with me. I can't click on a million times on my own video. It'd take me forever. So we have, we're going to hit 100 million views, gang. That's a big, big deal. But today we're talking about when you go fishing on, on a charter boat or an open party boat or go with a guide on his boat or anything that has to do with going fishing and having people take care of you and serve you. And we're talking about the proper way to tip. Now, we all know when we go to a restaurant, we're, we're expected to tip 15%. That's what we're expected to tip. Most of us in the industry that make our living off of tips, we're pretty much thinking we're gonna tip you 20% right off. That's what that's where our head's at. Now, if the service sucks, the, fu the, the, the restaurant's filthy, the service sucks, the waiter or waitress has an attitude, the food doesn't come out in a timely manner and it comes out and it tastes like crap, then we're not tipping. We know that. We already know that. We tip according to service. Here's where the disconnect in the industry of the fishing industry comes along. This is a big problem that all of you make. You all tip according to what you catch, which is absolutely ludicrous. I, I, I have a lot to say about this because I made my living running fishing boats for 47 years. And this tipping thing is something that a lot of captains get asked. A lot of passengers come up into the bridge at the end of the trip and say, hey, Skip, what's a good tip? And I would always say $1,000. You asked. I would be, we would talk about you for days and days and days if you tipped me $1,000. We would. We would talk about you all the time. But that was my humor. That was the way to open it up humor-wise. People go, $1,000. You asked. You came up and you asked me what would be a good tip. $1,000 would be a good tip. And you can't argue with that because it absolutely would be a great tip. We would all be happy. We'd be dancing around having a party if you tipped us 1000 bucks. But look, at here's what you all do, which is just mind-boggling to all of us in the industry. You tip according to what you catch, which is the lamest thing you could possibly do. That is lame, lame, lame. Oh, no, Captain. That's how I tip. I always tip according to what I catch. Well, that is lame because if you suck, if you're a horrible fisherman, why would you do that to me? And if you don't listen, and if you don't do what I say all day, and you don't catch anything, and then on the way in, you're like, whoa, I didn't catch shit. So I, oh, sorry. I didn't catch anything. So all the children, all the, I'm not tipping these guys a penny. I didn't catch anything. Matt Barr, that's the wrong. 20%, that's lame. Okay, and I'll explain it to you here in a minute why that's lame. Let, 
Gang, do not tip according to what you catch. Do not tip according to what you catch. Think of it like this. I like to think that I care about what we catch. I like to think that I actually give a crap about what happens on the boat that I'm driving at the time. I care about the maintenance. I care about the cleanliness. I care about my crew's attitude. I care about the way that I'm going to fish and how hard I'm going to fish. All those things come into play. The cleanliness of the boat, the, the mechanical ability of the boat, the bait handling on the boat, the tackle, the crew, their attitude, the cook's attitude. Everybody th matters to me when I'm performing the act of a captain on a boat, charter boat or a sport boat. All those things matter and they matter tremendously. And they matter and I'm going to make sure that we operate at the highest level we possibly can, taking care of you. Now, if you are going to tip according to what you catch, shame on you. That, that is so sad for me to think of that because I'm not the higher power. I'm not God. I can't control what is going to bite. I can't control how the fish are going to act today. If I... That's why I started out talking about the boats that caught limits last night that were all done, limited out before two o'clock in the morning. Do you think that those guys that work on that boat worked harder when the fish were biting? Or did they work harder if they caught nothing all night because it's been a night bite on the bluefin and now they're going to spend all day staring in the gyro stabilizing binoculars, driving around, stopping on empty kelp patties, stopping on meter marks of bluefin that don't bite. Do you understand that when they're biting, we work, we already know how to kill them. We know how to kill them at a level that most people can only dream of. We know how to gaff the fish. We know how to take care of the fish. We know how to properly bleed the fish. We know how to do all that. And we're very, very good at it. The industry is very, very good. 99.9% .9 of the boats are run at a very high level where they're very, very good at everything they do. But the one thing that none of us can do, captain, deckhand, cook, none of us can make the fish bite. And none of us can make you fish the proper way to catch the fish. We can suggest it all day long. I can make hundreds of thousands of videos of how to do it the right way. I can all day long. I can make those videos for you all day. But if you don't do it, then you're going to suck. And you're going to get on that sport boat and you're going to go out there and you're going to fish with your finger in your nose all day. And you're going to be chewing on boogers all day long. And you're not going to catch anything. And then on the way home, you're going to go, whoa. I didn't catch nothing. I'm not tipping these guys a penny. Because you didn't want to listen. Or because the fish kept their noses down. The weather, the wind was blowing out of the south. All those things happen on a daily basis that change what we're going to catch. But do you think when the fish aren't biting, and if I woke up, we got out to the bluefin ground. I had 20 people on my boat and we got, and I stopped on a great meter mark and first bait, our first knife jig or first Carnata jig was dropped down and got bit right away. And we hung a fish and the fish looked good on the boat. The sonar looked good. And there was fish all the way around the boat. And, and I was like, guys, I haven't had a, I haven't slept in four days. We've been just knocking the crap out. I'm going to take a nap. I wake up two hours later and we still only have the one fish on the boat or the two fish on the boat, but we're marking fish and they're not biting. And now I start driving around looking for fish, looking for fish, looking for fish. Now it's four o'clock in the morning. We still haven't found any more fish. We haven't found another meat mark. We're looking around, we're looking around. And then we find a mark an hour before at five o'clock in the morning, find another mark and we slide on that. It's a big school fish and we stop there and we fish our butts off until the sun comes up and we still haven't caught a fish. And now this crack gray light, we pick up the gyro stabilizing binoculars, me and I throw one of my guys up in the tower and he's or up in the 
on the roof or in the tower or in the life raft. And he's looking with the gyros and I got my other deckhand set next to me and he's staring in the gyros and I'm staring in the gyros and we've already been up all night. And we've been looking and we've been trying really, really hard to catch you some fish, but they aren't biting. And now we spend the whole day in the gyro stabilizing binoculars and we look and we find some empty kelp patties and we find some freezing fish that don't want to bite. We throw the kite out. We throw the flying fish out. We do da, 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 da. all the things we do all day and the fish just don't want to bite. They don't want to cooperate the day before we caught a hundred, but today we, we can't get a bite. But we worked our butts off and none of us have gotten any sleep yet. And uh, now it's starting to get dark again and we're on a day and a half trip and we're going to fish till midnight in this dark and we're going to stop on 15 marks and we're not going to get a bite. And uh, so now we have two fish on the boat. We fished our butts off and we all worked really hard. And now we have to drive the boat all the way back to the dock. And we only got two fish and we know that. It... And then you're going to tip according to what you caught. Now, the day before I caught 100. And it was right away. First stop. We caught all the fish. Do you think I worked harder when we caught a hundred right away, first thing, or do you do what did I work harder when I worked all day long and burned my eyeballs out of my head and stopped on a million fish that didn't want to bite? And but we kept you entertained and the boat was clean and the crew was courteous and clean and the boat was clean and the cook made you phenomenal food all day and everybody was trying as hard as they possibly could. And then it didn't come together. And it didn't happen. And now you're not going to, you, you don't feel obligated to tip us because we didn't catch anything. That is so sad that that is the mentality today is tipping according to what you caught. That should never, ever be. You should think about this too, because somebody was saying, I tip 20%. And I said, oh, that's wrong. That was Kevin. Okay, look it. You come on, let's just say, for some strange reason, all the stars lined up and everything, and I was running a sport boat again. And uh, we don't need to mention the name of the sport boat, but on the sport boat, we have a cook. We have a second captain. We have me, and we have at least two deckhands. So there's five, and most boats are going to have three three or four deckhands and the two captains. And let's say the trip cost 120 bucks, and you tip 20%, and we took super good care of you. We didn't, the fish didn't bite, so we didn't catch them, but you tip 20% of $120. So you tipped 105 bucks or 100, or excuse me, you tipped 25 bucks. Okay. Do you know how, do you know how the tips are split on a sport boat? And they're split this way on every boat, every boat, every single boat. A lot of the boats that are owned and operated by the captain, and he knows how hard it is to make a living in this industry, and he doesn't want to lose his crew. A lot of the captains that own the boat, they'll do this. They'll, they'll, if the tips are not way up to stand, they won't even take a share. But the tips are split e evenly between the crew members. So let's say you tip $30 for, for an overnight trip. So that means that you believed in your heart, you tip 30 bucks, there's five of us, so you tipped us each five bucks or look at, I'm just letting you know how it is. You do whatever you want. I don't care. I'm just trying to explain to you because you go to a restaurant and if you went out to a restaurant, let's just say you went to the finest restaurant in all of Newport Beach, California, and it was the greatest food you've ever had. And the service was impeccable. Think about this, that waiter or waitress, Bus boy, everybody, if it was the greatest service and you were there for an hour and a half, I guarantee you, you saw that waiter or waitress for 10 minutes the whole time. 
if you broke it down to how long it took to order, how long it took to serve, how many times they checked on your drink, your water, 10 minutes, maybe 15 at the very, very most. But you have no problem tipping that person 20%, that waiter or waitress. On a sport boat or a charter boat, we, have, we don't have to do anything, but we split the tips evenly between everybody on the boat. So that all I'm trying to do is help you. I told you going in, this was going to be the most controversial podcast that we've done in a very long time. I'm trying to help you to understand how it works on a boat. Now, how do I know this? Well, my family has quite a few of them. My father was in the industry since 1947. Dana Orr Sport Fishing. We have quite a few. We, we, uh, know how it goes. I know exactly what's going on, where it's going on and how it's going on. I've been in the industry my whole life. My father, everything he had, everything he bought was from fishing. When you go on a charter boat in Cabo San Lucas, you go on a charter boat in Jamaica, you go on a charter boat in New York or New Jersey or Florida or wherever you go. Let's just stop for a minute and let's forget about the price of the trip. Forget about the price of the trip. Please forget about the price of the trip because that doesn't come into the 20 per... Look at the human beings that are working on the boat. Tip them according to the service that they provided for you. Not the, what you caught. That is lame. That is... I can't even emphasize it enough how lame that is because when they're biting... It's easy. It is the easiest day in the world for a captain and crew when the fish are absolutely committing suicide. It is absolutely incredible the way that it's easy for us. Oh my gosh. Come off that first spot. We got them. Half limits, three quarters. Where are days made? We can kick back. We can relax. We can look in the gyros, but the pressure is already off of us. The pressure is dropped and we are feeling good and life is good. As a captain and a deckhand for my whole life, and I'm 61, almost 62 years old, I'm just trying to help you to understand what's going on. Now, those of you that are, I told you I'm going to, this is going to be controversial and there's a lot of crybabies on social media that are going to say, well, you should do something else for a living. <laughs> oh my god shut up shut up gang we love what we do and we're not begging you for money that's not what we're this is not what this is about we're not begging for money i'm trying to help you to understand the only reason in america we tip when we go to a restaurant the only reason is because we were taught since we were little children when our parents would, and I remember the first time I saw it, my mom left money, cash, paper money on the table when we got up to leave. And I was a little kid. I think I was seven, six or seven. And I was like, mom, you're leaving money on the table. And she said, yeah, David, that's a tip for those people that brought us our food and brought us our drinks and they took care of us and they kept the table cleaned and they did all that for us so we could enjoy our meal out at this restaurant. And I, I was blown away. I'm like, you left them money? We paid for the food. And she was all, no, sweetie, we tip. It's part of the culture in America is we tip for service. So now... You get on Justin Botrell's boat. You go bowline sport fishing. You go out with Justin, and it's Justin, and it's his deckhand. And they're out there all day killing themselves because the only thing that he, he wants to do when you get on his boat is he wants you to have the best day of your life. He wants you to think about his boat and him and his deckhand the whole time. So he is going to make sure his boat is clean, that the bathrooms work, that the bait is alive and that the squid is not pink and that you have the proper hooks, the proper line, the proper rod, the proper reel, 
and your boat is clean and everything's ready to go. Now he goes out and he has a hard day out there because he got out there and it's blowing southeast and the wind's coming out of the east. And when the wind blows out of the east, fishing is the least. Justin cannot control that. But what Justin can control is his boat, the cleanliness of his boat, the mechanical ability of his boat, the food that you're going to eat on his boat, the drinks that you're going to drink on his boat, and the way that his deckhand is going to speak with, to you, the cleanliness of his deckhand, the clothes that the deckhand's wearing, and the ability to bring you up into the bridge and explain to you what's going on all day so that you understand what is going on. That is what is going on. Dude, okay, independent analyst. Do deckhands get paid an hourly wage from the boat operation when you're on the trip? Do wage laws apply? Or do, okay, listen. Here's how it works. In our industry, the sport fishing boat industry, Forever and ever and ever, you got paid per trip. Now, it's still a gray area. You could get, you could probably cause a phenomenal amount of problems the way that the world is today. You could, you could present a phenomenal amount of problems for all boat operators. And if that's what you want, if that's what you're, job is you could but here's how it works on a fishing boat we got to be there an hour before our trip leaves minimum before you get on the boat to go out we're fishing on i don't want to use any boat names but it, okay I, i'll use our family boats names because i don't want to offend any crybaby captains out there that are watching this and they all are even if they say they aren't so we'll use the clemeni for an example let's say the clemeni is the three-quarter day boat out of dana wharf sport fishing and it leaves at six o'clock in the morning okay that doesn't mean dave as the captain i mean dave as the deckhand gets there at six o'clock in the morning and when it was it jumps on the boat and off the boat goes and everything's taken care of no as the deckhand, you're required to be there an hour, one whole hour before the boat leaves. So if the boat leaves at six o'clock in the morning, you have to be there at 5 a.m. You have to, because we have to get, we have to get the boat ready. We have to make sure everything's clean. We have to make sure that when all the rods are set up, all the tackle set up, the galley set up, there's ice on the boat for the fish. All these things need to be ready to go. And then normally we're going to start to allow the passengers to get on the boat at 530. We're going to start to let you on the boat at 530. So we have to be there at five o'clock to start to get the boat ready so that you can get on at 530 so that the boat can leave at six. Here's how it's set up. You get paid when the boat leaves the dock and when it gets back in. When the boat gets back in in the afternoon, at five o'clock or six o'clock or seven o'clock and you get off the boat. Are we done for the day? Do, 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 does the captain and the crew get to go home at five when you guys get to get off the boat? No, no. Now we have to go get fuel because the boat doesn't run on thank yous. We have to go to the fuel dock. We have to get fuel. We have to get back. We have to clean everything. Boat has to be clean, spotless, all scales off the rails. Boat's got to be scrubbed, all the blood, all the guts, everything's got to be off the boat. All the gunny sacks or the fish box or whatever we're using is going to be clean, spotless. Everything's going to be clean. The galley's going to be clean. The bunk room's going to be clean. All the blankets are going to be folded. All the, all the uh, pillows are going to be fluffed and cleaned. And I know nowadays it's a little different with what happened in 2019, 2020. So you bring your own blanket, your own crew. But I'm just telling you, bunk room's clean, boat's clean, bathrooms are clean, fuel's on the boat, everything. So when we get in at 5, we may get off the boat at 6.30, 7 o'clock at night, go home. I'm not complaining. I'm explaining. All I'm doing is explaining to you how it all works. Okay? So at the end of the day, we all sit down at the galley table when everything's done. 
and we lay out all the money. Take it out of the tip jars, take it out of whatever, your pockets, whatever. And also, gang, if you're on a boat, and I could see this all day, every day, and a passenger shoves a 20 in your pocket, and that doesn't go into the pool of the tips, you think that I didn't see it? Or you think your captain didn't see it? We see everything. So we see that, and, and I would have this conversation with my deckhands all the time. I would go, hey, do you want me to pull my money? Because I promise you the passengers shoved way more money in my pocket than they shoved in your pocket. Should I just keep my money that they shoved in my pocket for me? No, I'm not that guy. I believe everything that happened on the boat was because of all of us. So... The tips get pulled together in a big pile and then we split it up. And if there's an extra dollar or maybe an extra five dollars, we would have a flip and we'd flip a coin. And our Jim would get the extra five today. Justin would get the extra five tomorrow. Tim would get the extra five. Or what I like to do is we'd put it in a the extra five dollars every day. We'd take the tips and we'd put it into a fund. And at the end of the year, we would do something cool. We would go somewhere as a crew, as a go to somewhere and do something fun, maybe have a big barbecue on the beach or go to Disneyland together as a group or go to the fair or do something. But we made it fun. But the tipping thing is so important in the industry, but most people don't know. And that's why we try to have this show every five or six months. And right now is a good time to have this show before we jump into this season. That's going to be incredible. This fishing season is going to be incredible. If you don't have your charters already booked, if you don't have your trips already set up, if you haven't gone through, if you haven't called Justin and set up your trips on his boat or any of the other charter boats you like to fish on and stuff, I'm going to tell you something right now. You're going to have a very, very, very hard time getting on a boat this year because the fishing is already incredible. It's the bluefin fishing, the sea bass fishing, the yellowtail are starting to trickle in, the rockfish fishing. All the fishing is really, really, really beginning to happen. And the people are booking up their trips and things are starting to happen. And now the weather has made a turn and things are starting to get better in the weather front. So you better get your trips booked quick. But I want you all from this point forward to forget about what you paid. To get on the boat. Forget about what. Lose that. If you paid 500 bucks to get on the boat. That's what you paid to get on the boat. But that has nothing to do with the tip. Oh my God. It has nothing to do with the tip. Nothing to do with the tip. Nothing to do with the tip. I don't care. What your sister's cousin's brother told you. That's all bull -only. What has to do with the tip is those things that I mentioned earlier. The boat. Look at the boat you're on. Look at the cleanliness of the boat. Look at the rails. Look at the bait tank. Look at the bathrooms. All that stuff matters. This is what you're going to tip according to, the cleanliness of the boat. Then look at the crew members. If they're... There's those guys. If they're... Got a cigarette hanging out of their mouth and they're talking to your children. Well, you're not getting my business ever again. I'll just be honest with you. It's not 1970. Get that cigarette out of my child's face or my grandchild's face right now. If every other word out of their mouth is a cuss word, you're, I'm never going on that boat again. They're not getting a tip out of my pocket. That's for damn sure. Because attitude is everything nowadays and money is so hard to come by. And there, you have choices. You do not have to go on the boat that calls themselves thugsportfishing.com. What? What are in the hell are you talking about? No, 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 no. Anybody can catch a fish. You're not a superstar because you drove the boat out and caught a fish. That doesn't mean that we get to give you all our hard-earned money. Attitude is everything, gang. If the crew's not there to help you, if they're not there and they're not courteous and they're not taking good care of you, no, don't tip. Don't tip, but don't go on that boat again either. My God, stay away from those people. 
Another thing that blows my mind in this industry is there's a website that I used to work with exclusively, and I had Phil on the show with me. There's a website called 976 Tuna. This is going to help you out tremendously if you don't know what I'm talking about. Go over there and listen to the... Back in the day when I was working with them, I would report three times a day, and I was called a sellout, and I was called Captain Bragg, and I was called a million different names, but I know marketing. Sorry, I was way ahead of the curve, way, way ahead of the curve. I was marketing the living bejesus out of my business back in the day, and I was crucified for doing it by a bunch of the guys that sleep on thin pieces of vinyl. Um, but now they all do it. Now they're all on there, but here's 90% of their reports are like this. And you can listen to them on 976. It's absolutely ludicrous to me and I don't understand it. We don't want to know that you're having a bad day. That's not, we don't care. We don't want to hear about it. There's so much negativity in the world. We don't need to listen to your crybaby stuff, but here's how they do their report. And it's, there's, there's, 99.9% of the guys are phenomenal at doing it and they're great at it and they get it. But then there's these guys. All right. Hey, Terrence, this is, uh, yeah. Yeah. And we're over here in the, and conditions suck. The passengers, this is the worst group of people I've ever seen before on my boat. The passengers suck. We got private boaters following us around. There's a million sea lions. The tide's going the wrong way. The current, no conditions today at all. Everything's, uh, the whole world sucks. But hey, we got openings tonight on our trip. I don't understand why no one wants to go because the whole, everything sucks. But we have openings tonight if you want to join us. Blows my mind. Blows my absolute mind. I have no clue why they think that's important to put those reports out. If everything sucks, and your life sucks that bad, don't report. Don't put the report out. Those people will show up. Maybe you'll get the uneducated people that'll show up and go out on your boat. (laughs) It's the same guys every day doing the same thing, the same report. I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense to me. If I don't have something positive to tell you about what's going on out on the water, here's how... I would approach it if I was that guy. Hey, gang. We're just coming in from our day out here on the water. It was, it, uh, conditions were a little different, you know, and fish had their noses down today. But hey, you know what that means? That means really good news for those of you coming out with us tonight or thinking about coming with us because, man, it, it's been a long time since the fish didn't bite two days in a row. So. If you're coming with us tonight, you got a phenomenal chance of catching some fish because, man, I'm telling you, today was very, very slow, but tomorrow could be phenomenal because, man, I haven't seen two days in a row. But, man, the negative is just mind-boggling to me. And Go to 976 and listen to the reports because I'm getting to the point in my career now where I'm almost to the point where I'm ready to just start exposing them and showing them and and letting you listen to them on our podcast. We do a live podcast every day, Monday through Friday. How fun would that be to start showing those people? Start showing you and let you listen to them on our podcast. If you don't want to go over and listen, you would be blown away that people actually think that they're running a business by talking like that. And they think that that's going to help their business. It blows my mind. There's certain boats that carry lots of people because they're the lowest priced boat on the coast. That's the only reason why they carry all those people. It's just amazing to me. Absolutely amazing to me that people conduct themselves in the world today with the internet, with the, that they're going to talk about that. But getting back to what we were talking about, about the tipping thing from today forward, please don't, please do not tip according to. That's a great question, Tim. That's a great question. Do you think fuel surcharges are ever going to end? Well, I don't want to get into this political thing, but 
In the last two and a half years, fuel prices have increased incredible. It's hard to get out in front of it. If you're a, let's just say for fun, Tim, you own a charter boat, okay? And two and a half years ago, when you fueled up your charter boat, we're just going to throw out some fun numbers. Two and a half years ago, when you fueled up your charter boat, it cost 1200 US dollars to fill up your charter boat. Okay. Now it costs you $4,200 to fill up your charter boat. So should you eat that cost? Let's say you chartered, you, you put the price up at $3,000 for the trip two and a half years ago. And now this year, the fuel cost has gone up four times. Should you run your boat? take people fishing and you pay to take them. I did that in 2004 or 2005, 2006. I owned a charter boat where I actually paid money to take you fishing because we couldn't get in front of the, we couldn't charge enough. Remember back in 2005, 2006, when the price of fuel was going up 10 cents every day, some days 20 cents. I couldn't get in front of it. I could not get in front of it. I, there was an, it was impossible as a six-pack charter boat captain to get in front of it. We were charging $1,500 for the day to take you tuna fish, and the tuna were biting on the dolphins between Catalina and Clemente. And when they're biting on the dolphins, gang, it's really hard fishing because the dolphin are swimming at 8, 10 knots most of the time, and you got to get out in front of them. So you would run, 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 get in front of them, drop your lines in the water, catch five or six. By the time you caught that sixth one, you'd look off in the distance and those dolphins would be seven, eight miles from you. So then you would take off and you would run, 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 run. And then you'd get in front of the dolphin a half, an hour later. Because remember, the price of fuel was flying. So we're not doing 20 knots to catch up to the dolphins. We're doing eight or nine knots because we just can't afford to go that fast. Then we get in front of the dolphin and we hang three or four fish. And then those dolphins, by the time we land the third one, those dolphins are six, seven miles away again. So we run and run and run and run and run. I burned $2,000 worth of fuel. You paid $1,500 to go fishing with me. I couldn't charge, I couldn't go to you, Tim, and say, hey, Tim, I know I told you the trip was 1500 but the tuner on the dolphin, we're going to go chase them all day. You guys are going to have to kick me in another 600 bucks, so at least a boat can make 100 bucks tomorrow. You know what you would tell me? Go pound sand. We're not coming. So I couldn't do that, and that's what's happened in the last three years. That price of fuel has gone up so much. The only way that the industry can get in front of it is by charging you a fuel surcharge. Now, if something happened and somebody else got into office and the price of the fuel went down to where it was two and a half years ago, then I believe in my heart that absolutely the industry would drop the fuel surcharge or they would kick down the prices. But I don't see that happening on our planet. I don't see that happening in the, in the on the planet Earth. I see the price of everything going up. That's the only reason. We don't do these fuel surcharges because, oh, let's rip off our clients. Oh, that's just a good time to rip them off. No, you have to understand. When you pull up to the gas pump to fill up your car, and it costs twice as much as it cost two and a half years ago, then you know that it, the, the sport boat, it cost him the same. Everything happens. Well, yeah, it's only one direction because it's not because the sport fishing industry is making so much money. The price of our fuel is going up too. Our fuel price didn't go down because your fuel price went up. That is absolutely amazing. That is absolutely Amazing to think that. And if you look at the sport fishing industry and you look at the captains and you look at the owners, we're not driving Maseratis and Porsches and, and living in big giant palaces. 
We're all just making it like all of you are. And we're just trying to go fishing. And we just want to go out there and have a good time with you and enjoy ourselves. And uh, the industry's always, since the beginning of time, it's run on tips. Just to give you a little background, when I first started in the industry back in 74, 75, that's when I first started being a deckhand on a boat. We used to fillet your fish for free. Well, we didn't even fillet them. You were allowed to head and gut them. I think we were allowed to start filleting them in like 78 or 79. But in the beginning, we head and gutted your fish. That was all we were allowed to do by law. And uh, we just threw a tip jar on the fillet board. We put a big glass jar up on the fillet board and we put water in it so that you've dropped your dollars in that water. Back then, gasoline was like 38 cents a gallon. And uh, you would drop money in the jar. We didn't have to charge you for your fish cleaning. You just dropped money in the jar. And people would go, why do you have money in the jar? And we, we, I mean, why do you have water in your uh, tip jar? And we would say, so that it grows. And uh, that was humor. And people would get a kick out of it. And then they'd throw a couple extra dollars in there. Man, it mattered. It mattered a lot. Then I remember when we got to start filleting and we would charge 25 cents of fish to fillet your fish. And we would charge 25 cents of fish. Then it went to 33, it went to 30, it went to 33 cents, and then it went to a dollar. God, I have no idea what they charge nowadays, but they don't catch, they're not allowed to catch fish like we used to, and they don't have anchovies for bait like we used to, and fishing was different. But back in the beginning of time, when I first started working, everyone just understood. You just threw money in the jar to show your appreciation to the deckhands and the captain. And now it's gotten to the point where most of the boats don't even clean your fish. You get them taken to the fish processing. So the only real way is for us to be able to support our families and make a living in the industry is with the tips, and that comes from the generosity of you. But you also pay attention. Not everybody deserves that tip. Not every deckhand deserves it. Not every captain deserves it. Not every boat deserves it. So when you get on the boat, look at the cleanliness of the boat first and foremost. Look at the cleanliness of the bathrooms. These are things that matter so much that you're going to be able to tell everything by the trash cans, and by the bathroom. That's going to tell you right away, good operation or bad. That's I'm just telling you because I know I've been in this industry my whole life. If they don't care about the bathroom and the trash can, well, then they sure the hell don't care about you. Look at that. Check it out. And there's so many captains watching this, and there's so many deckhands watching this right now. I'm just trying to help you all make a living and pull your head out of your butt and understand what the hell's going on out there. I used to tell my deckhands, I'm going to I'm gonna really get honest with you. I used to tell my deckhands back in the 80s and 90s, every single person on this boat, every single person on this boat has a $20 bill in their pocket that they want to give to you. If we carried 199 people, 99 people had a 20 in their pocket they wanted to give. If we carried 10 people, 10 of them had a $20 bill in their pocket they wanted to give you. They all want to give it to you. They don't know they do, but they do. Now it's up to us to get that person to give us that 20. And it's all going to start in the very beginning with your attitude. It's all going to start with the look at the rails. If they're covered in scales, Man, that was one of my pet peeves when I don't, because I was taught when I was a kid, man, if there's scales on the rails, oh, we're in big trouble. We're in big, big trouble. We didn't clean the boat right last night. We're all in trouble if there's scales on the rail. All this stuff matters. But look around at the, look around at yourself and think about you're getting on the boat. You've done your due diligence. You've asked the questions. You know what boat you're going on. I would take deckhands aside all the time too and I would just say, hey, 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 stop. I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't really care. You're at work today. Leave your attitude back in your backpack. 
Put it back in your backpack because you're costing me and, and the rest of us money because you, you're, you're a crybaby. And you're if you don't want to be here, don't be here. Don't show up this morning. Go home. When you would show up in the morning and you smelled like you've been out all night, your clothes were filthy, dirty. I didn't want you on my boat. I, I, there's just so many things that matter that you are in control of from today forward when you go on that sport boat or on that charter boat. There, everybody has positioned themselves in a matter that they're doing the very, very best they can possibly do. And there's a handful of people that just don't care. And you can find them right away. You can see it right away when you get on the boat. You can, you can see. Yeah, you're committed the first time. Don't go on the boat again. If you didn't like it, if you didn't enjoy it, don't tip them. They, no one, no one, no one. should ever expect the tip, ever. Now, if you worked your butt off and you presented yourself proper, then yeah, you deserve a tip. But you never expect the tip. And the other thing that we did away with on the boat I was in charge of back in the day was the jackpot. That jackpot does nothing but create a bunch of problems on a, on a day boat, on a three-quarter. On the long-range boats, man, you get rid of all the riffraff and all that garbage is... We're not talking about you guys. You guys are at such a high level, high, high level. There's no garbage going on. There's no riffraff. The long range industry, the long range fleet, they operate at the highest possible rate. You have to be the very, very best crew member in the world to get on those boats to begin with. So you're not going to run into that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the day boats, the three quarter day boats, the half day boats. We're talking about these guys. We're not talking about the long range industry. I'm just trying to be perfectly honest with you. When you get onto those boats, you can't even compare the, the way you're going to be treated. The, the treatment, and there isn't a bad one in the group. Those guys are operating at the highest, highest, highest level that they could possibly, and their crew is at the highest level, and they're not grabbing rip rap, and they're not taking booger eaters captain our crews and captains they're taking the very best the elite of the elite when you get on those long range boats that is the best of the best we're not talking about them you don't even have there's not one bad one in the group there we are talking about the half day three quarter day overnight boats up and down the coast get down to san diego they're operating at a level but it's the up above san diego area that you got to really pay attention to really watch who you're going with pay attention and understand that they need to be held accountable i'm sorry you hate me all you want i don't really care i'm just being honest and letting you know so that's the number one thing i could say i can't believe we went an hour about this but that's what's going on out there on the water every penny you hand to it a crew member or a captain on a sport boat is split evenly between the crew. It always has been and it always will be. It, it's just the way it is. So think about it the next time you go. Forget about the price of the trip. I don't want to hear, well, I paid $500 to go on this trip, so I'm going to tip 20%. Please don't. Please think about what you're doing and where you're at. And also, gang, we understand not everybody can afford to tip. But... Be cool when you're on the boat. Remember, we don't expect the tip. Be cool when you're on the boat. Be cool. Just be cool. Hey, you know, I'm here. To leave my attitude at home and just get on the boat and be cool and enjoy yourself. And don't feel bad because you don't have enough money to tip. That's not what this is. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is knowing what's going on with that money that you pull out of your pocket. Knowing what's going on with it. Understanding what's going on and the jackpot that's a whole we can have a whole show about that we can have a whole show about the jackpot i got rid of it on the boat i was running because it causes nothing but controversy it causes nothing but problems it's filthy i was one of the biggest offenders of it back in the day when i was when i before i got sober which i've been sober for 35 years that other part of my life is a different story. It's a garbage story. I hope 
lot, a lot of you were around back then to see who I was because I was not a good human back then. I'm a way different human today than I ever was back then. Sobriety changed my whole life. But um, make sure that you get a chance to check out my website, yoursaltwaterguide.com. Gang, we have tons and tons of great videos. We have all kinds of cool stuff. We built a bitchin' app. Check out my app. Go there, look at it. And uh, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Those of you on Spotify and Apple and, uh, and Megaphone, we got a phenomenal special guest coming in on Friday. Actually, we're going to have two for the first time ever. We're going to have two special guests joining us on Friday. We're going to have Justin Botrell and we're going to have Sonny Sun from uh, Ventura. Sonny is a new guide working for the company. Your saltwater guide is willing to go with you on your boat, teach you how to fish those Channel Islands, that great mystery up there of the Channel Islands. Sonny is willing to go with you on your boat. And then Justin, he's been going with people on their boats. He's a guide. He works with your saltwater guide. Plus, he has his own charter boat. Plus, he makes a lot of videos for our website. And he's got the cool, the cool little boy that made the great video of how to clean your lobsters. And he joined me on stage at the Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Show. Those two guys are going to join us. They're going to be on the show on Friday. It's going to be a phenomenal show. We're going to get down and dirty and talk about where they came from, how they got to where they are now, and how they're helping out the industry. And they're jumping on your boats and helping you to be successful when you go fishing on your private boat. We're the only guys doing it in Southern California legally. We have our guide licenses. We go with you on your boat. Both of these guys are 100-ton masters. They both have their 100-ton license. But when they come with you on your boat, they're simply the guide. They're going to teach you how to fish on your boat. I did that for 20 years. Very, very successful. Went on a lot of different boats. Had a really good time. A lot of the people are very close personal friends of mine today. I've been to their family's weddings, childbirths, birthday parties, hung out. Went on vacation with lots of them. Stayed in their houses. Done all kinds of cool stuff. It just... It's attitude is everything. And you're going to see this when you talk to Sonny and you're going to see this when you talk with Justin. They're go both going to be on the show on Friday. Make sure you don't miss it. Spotify, Apple, and Megaphone, thank you for the, all the listens when you're in your car cruising. I can't even tell you how blown away I am at how fun this whole thing is and how great everything's working. I really appreciate everything you all do. Thank you very, very much. Keep watching me. I'll keep doing these shows. I'll keep on having cool guests on. I think this show on uh, Friday is really going to be fun. And then we're going to try to get Wayne Katow to come on next week from CCA and explain to us all these regulations and all these things going on out here on the water. He's going to try to get a little bit of time and join us on Friday. We will see if Wayne joins us. But once again, thank everybody from the bottom of Kelly's heart, bottom of my heart, all you that give away the stars every day, Augie, Mike, Dan and Kim, Scott, you guys are always there for me and my family, and I appreciate all of you. And anybody else that thinks that, hey, this stuff's cool and what Dave does is awesome, you can always leave us stars on Facebook. I appreciate all of them. And then I try to answer each and every person. And anybody that joins my website, I promise you I will never let you down. I answer everybody's questions. When you're signing up, though, and I ask you for your phone number. It's I own the website. I'm not selling your phone number. I want to call you and invite and introduce myself to you and give you a full tour of the website. That's the only reason why I ask for your phone number. If you don't leave your phone number, I can't help you. That's just, I don't know how. I, my ESPN broke a long time ago. I didn't pay my cable bill, so I don't got ESPN anymore, so I can't read your mind. But So call me, leave a message, leave your phone number, join the website, download my app, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great day. Be kind to each other. Turn off the news. They're all lying. <laughs>